All right. We are grilling up some steaks. So we've done this before, uh, but in the past we did a reverse sear, and that's where we smoked it um, for however long, and then we went ahead and just seared it very quickly. This time it's gonna be a more traditional cook. This is just gonna be a quick, you know, straightforward, crazy hot, but pretty fast um, grilling of some ribeyes. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna season them now. So it's about noon and we'll probably need it at six, so I'll start the process at 5.30, something like that, five o'clock. Um, so we're gonna season these now and I'm just gonna put them in the fridge on a cooling rack and just let them sit there and let that seasoning, you know, penetrate however it can. These are very good, you know, nice and tender. There's some solid marbling in here. This is a good cut of meat, and it's not ridiculously thick. Right? I don't know, what is that, an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. So we don't need the dry brine. Everybody, you know, talks about dry brining. I dry brine if it's three inches or thicker, or if it's not a great cut of meat. Because all dry brining is you put the salt on the outside, the salt is gonna pull out the moisture, and then the meat is gonna reabsorb the moisture and pulling the salt down with it. And it does two things. One, as that salt's going back in, it's ripping apart the fibers in the meat, so it's tenderizing it. And then the other is you're seasoning, you know, inside the meat instead of just whatever's on the outside. So for a really thick cut, you know, if you're eating a slice of steak this thick, you're gonna need a lot of seasoning because the middle's gonna have nothing. So that's where I dry brine. A tomahawk is a perfect dry brine steak. In this case, we're just gonna season it, but we will give it as much possible, as much time as possible to let that seasoning in here. So I am just rubbing some uh, olive oil just to get it um, a little wet so the seasoning has something to stick to. And I don't like to drown steaks in mustard or anything like that. So it's just a nice shot of extra virgin olive oil. So we've got our olive oil on. So now let's go ahead and season it. And today I'm using this Jack Daniel steak seasoning. This stuff is amazing. So this is very, very good steak seasoning. I love it. There's some nice big chunks. And you know, it's salt, pepper, garlic, and whatever else they've thrown in here. But there's some nice big chunks, so you did get a pretty good crust on here. And the flavor is outstanding. So this is a very, you know, I just finished saying it's not the thickest cut of meat in the world, but it's still a thick piece of meat. So it does need a good amount of seasoning. So we'll go ahead and Coat it very nicely, press it on, and we will make sure we get all sides. Okay, so we've got these two coated in cover and uh, seasoning. We're gonna put them on a cooling rack and put them in the fridge. So this is a cooling rack. So we'll put it on a cooling rack, put it in the fridge. We just want that seasoning to be absorbed into the meat however it can, and we'll let it stick on. We're not gonna cook these for another, you know, five hours or so, so there's plenty of time here. Uh, and when we do cook them, we are probably gonna be cooking like six, 700 degrees. So we're gonna treat this more like a traditional grill, if you will, but we're gonna be using super hot charcoal and uh, it's gonna come out amazing. It'll get a nice little crust, it'll be cooked well, and there's some nice texture. It's a different flavor profile because it's not smoked, but it's, it's very good and this is an easy, you know, weeknight cook. So I'm I'm letting it um, sit for five hours before I'm cooking it, but I could throw this on right now. It's still gonna be amazing. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. We'll let it uh, let it sit till I'm ready to start up that grill and uh, we'll come back in a bit. All right, so we've zoomed in here so you can see how we season it. We have coated every single piece of this steak, all the sides, the top, the bottom. We didn't miss any of it. And we applied a lot of seasoning. So again, it is not the thickest steak you could buy, obviously but it's still a pretty thick piece of meat. And obviously when you slice some meat and you cut it, only a small portion of it is the top or the bottom that has the seasoning. So that's why we wanna season all of it. And we wanna apply a lot of seasoning. It's gonna come out great. Um, we're gonna put this in the fridge. We'll let it sit until we're ready to cook. If I'm trying to eat at five, I will probably light my fire at, uh, sorry, if I'm trying to eat at six, I'll probably light my fire at like 515 give the fire a half an hour, 40 minutes to do what it needs to do. So let's go ahead and we'll get these in the fridge and we'll come back in a little bit um, when it's time to start our grill. All right, we've got our fire going. So you saw me season the steaks and put them in the fridge and that was four or five, six hours ago. I forget what time that was. Um, and now we're ready to cook them. So we, uh, we've got our fire going here. What I did was, uh, I don't know what order I'm gonna upload these in, but I just cooked ribs. And as soon as I took those ribs off, I just threw a bunch of fresh charcoal on here 
and it immediately caught. And we want this to get as hot as possible. So I want like 700, 750 degrees. And we're gonna cook these steaks quick. We're gonna throw them down a minute and a half, two minutes on each side, and then we should be good. My wife's is gonna be the tricky one because she wants well done and that's always a giant pain. But, um, so I might overshoot it. But, uh, you know, just pay attention to the timing and the technique, but we season ahead of time. Let that seasoning get in there as long as possible. I'm gonna let this fire come up. We, don't, we still don't want this nasty smoke, so we'll let this fire come up, clean out some of this fresh uh, charcoal smoke, the thick white smoke, and then uh, we'll throw these steaks on in a few minutes. I've taken the steaks out of the fridge. We want them to, to come to room temperature. I don't wanna just throw super cold steaks on here. So they'll probably be you know, at room temperature for 20 minutes or so. So we'll come back when this is ready to go and we'll throw the steaks on. All right, we are at, this is pegged right now. So we're almost at 900 degrees, which is totally fine. That's not really gonna mess up our timing. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put these steaks on. And uh, the goal here is like two minutes per side, maybe a minute and a half per side. I'm gonna probe as I go. I do have an instant read thermometer. So I'm just gonna probe as I go, but, but this is quick. This is very quick. So let's put this on. We're gonna, we're gonna, let me close this lid. We're gonna look for two minutes aside. I'll start with one and a half and probe. Um, my wife wants well done, so hers, I might do three or four minutes aside. We'll know at the end of this video what the exact numbers were, but I'm shooting for medium rare on one, well done on the other, and we're gonna rely on this and a stopwatch, basically. So we'll check back in a minute and a half or so. All right, let's flip them. You got a nice little char going here. Let's go ahead and flip these. Give them another 30 seconds to a minute. That's not burnt, that's the seasoning we used. It's gonna crisp up nice, and this is gonna be our nice uh, outside crust here. All right, let's check. It's been about two minutes. We're gonna probe it. So we're at 135, so let's go ahead and take this off. The heat is gonna rise a little bit, so we'll take that one off. I'm gonna flip this one again. Shut this lid. That's the one that we want well done, so we'll let that go a little longer. This other one that we took off, I'm gonna cover. We'll rest it. We'll rest it, and then uh, we'll slice it open. All right, let's take a look. This should be done. Yep, so we're right there. Let's pull this off. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna let it rest. We'll rest it in some tin foil, and uh, it should be, we'll let it sit for 10 minutes. It's still gonna rise about five, 10 degrees maybe. But uh, we'll let this sit here, and we'll go ahead and slice it open. The other one is resting. I actually put some butter on there. This one we're just going to leave like this. I'm going to cover it with tin foil, but we'll let it rest, reabsorb those juices, and check back in uh, 10 minutes. All right, so these rested for about 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and cut them. Uh, I think this was the one I was shooting for well done, and this medium. Uh, I usually overshoot these things, but let's take a look. Cut it right down the middle. Oh, okay, that's a perfect medium wear, medium well. Look at that. Let's go ahead and check this one out. So these came out great. So we have great temperature in between. If you want it to go a little longer, you can put it right back on. If you, um, you know, if it's good, it's good, obviously. So we're using our instant read. But I'm trying to do that as fast as possible because of the flames. But uh, this came out really nice, super juicy. Great crust, so the crust is very dark, but that's because our seasoning was dark and there's a lot of big chunks that burn off really well. So this is great, we're gonna go eat it. Like, subscribe if you have any questions, let me know.